Thank you very much. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So um, I'm probably the only non-engineer in the room, but I'm an economist by training. But I think today I want to, you know, kind of open the session and also to share a bit more information, more general information about our PhD program. Some of the items will also touch on some of the questions that you guys have raised. So, um, so I think today's event is um, pretty exciting. I think um, the a graduate committee um, uh, at CDE has put up a really exciting lineup of speakers, including uh, current faculty members, our provost, um, Professor Sylvia uh, Gradishek, um, who will actually address kind of more, you know, more questions related to, you know, why should you pursue a PhD? Why should you pursue a PhD at NUS? How do you go about preparing yourself for graduate school? How do you know whether you're ready for a PhD or whether that's the path you should choose? And then we also have um, some speakers who are actually alumni of the uh, program. So one speaker, uh, Dr. Uzar, uh, um, is going to speak with you a little bit more on um, you know his own PhD journey. So probably some of the you know what inspired him to do a PhD, as well as you know what are some of the challenges, as well as the success stories that he faced during his journey. And Dr. Uh, Doreen, who is um, actually currently in one of our cop labs, sitting right here in engineering, uh, who will also share with you about her transition from being you know from 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 undergraduate to deciding to do a PhD at NUS and then sort of moving on to industry uh, within our you know uh, our ecosystem. Okay, so that's that's sort of the lineup for today and also there will be a chance for you to ask lots of questions and you really should so I think some of you have already submitted questions um, uh, there will be ample opportunity for you to kind of um, ask the panel um, questions you know whether they relate to kind of the application process or you know maybe other questions about you know how do I choose a thesis supervisor how do I even go about making a connection I think they were very um, happy and willing to share some of these tips so uh, please don't hold back okay but um, before I uh, hand the time over to the speakers I just wanted to cover some of the more um, sort of factual information about the program. So today's session, how to get a PhD and, you know, naturally why you should do it here, right? Okay, so, uh, you know, some of you might be thinking and, and you're probably at a stage in your life where you're considering, you know, there are many different pathways, you know, should I, I'm going to graduate soon, you know, should I go and get a job first? Should I go and get a master's degree? Should I uh, work for a while, then do a master's degree? Or should I go and do a PhD directly? or maybe do some you know, configuration along that path. So I think it's important in some way to kind of realize the distinction between a master's and a PhD, and maybe how it also differs from your undergraduate studies. So the first is that, I mean, you can naturally do a master's degree, and that's a form of higher education, but in general, I think master's programs are really um, kind of a program that really is meant to help you further deepen your subject knowledge. So in some way, it's going to be material that's perhaps different and maybe harder than your undergraduate degree, but ultimately the structure of the program more generally is probably not too different in terms of you know, the way it's positioned from your undergraduate studies. Perhaps there might be a little bit more focus on internships, maybe more on industry specific kind of uh, um, interactions, but ultimately it's still, you know, um, a successful master's degree is really very much awarded for the completion of your studies, the coursework requirements, and perhaps some sort of you know, small research project or uh, internship attachment. Okay. Now, a PhD is quite different, and I think this is why it's worthwhile to spend a couple of minutes on this, right? So what is a PhD? So a PhD is really a chance to spend four or five years, and maybe more, especially if you end up devoting your career to research, right, on really trying to create new knowledge in the field. So what this really means is that a successful PhD is not so much getting good grades, although that's obviously one part of it, right, but it's really to be able to find out and do something new, okay, and which really means then that to some extent, coursework and everything is important, but really the aim of that four or five years is to really kind of push, push the frontier of knowledge, meaning you're trying to look for new solutions, which means that the solutions ideally don't exist, right? Because otherwise, it's nothing new to find. So, and, and in that sense, the thinking and the process and thinking about whether you're ready for it and whether it's something that you want to do um, kind of changes a little bit. Okay. And of course, a natural question would then be, what can you do with a PhD? And I, I think my, my, my panel will be, you know, will, will, will share with you some insight on what you can do once you have a PhD. All right. So in that sense, a PhD then is awarded, a successful PhD is awarded less so for just completing your studies, finishing the coursework, but rather for attaining some sort of uh, scholarly achievement. So this ability to kind of shift the research frontier, if only just a little bit. Okay, you don't have to like, make a massive shift in the research frontier, right? Y even a small shift is difficult, and, and that's, that's what a PhD is for. Okay, so why NUS, right? So this is a NUS outreach event, so naturally we need to spend a bit more time talking about why uh, we think that this is a, a good place to consider doing your graduate studies. 
Um, most of you uh, are very well aware that I think at least in terms of you know world rankings, we are doing very, very well. In terms of subject rankings, we're also doing very well, which basically means in a nutshell that you are, if you choose to do your PhD here, uh, employers like it. And that, you know, if you do intend to become a professor, you're not making a wrong choice. So at least in terms of your checklist of like, you know, where to do your PhD, at least, you know, it's helpful that we are up there in the rankings. Okay, so rankings is easy. Okay, so that's one. Is this going to work with me? Okay, sorry. Okay, so more on ranking. So I think uh, this is mostly an engineering crowd, but I think it's also nice that uh, in terms of world rankings, we are actually um, doing quite well in many different subjects, which basically means that I, I think if you're interested or you're not extremely sure about exactly which subject area that you are interested in working on, there are lots of opportunities to explore adjacent fields and related fields. Uh, NUS is a very big university uh, and it's very research intensive. I think the numbers speak for themselves. So we have about 50,000 undergraduates and postgraduates and PhD students, of whom about 4,000 are PhD students uh, spread across a wide variety of fields. In case you're interested, about 30 or 40% of them are actually engineers. So clearly they're very well represented within the PhD population. We have many doctoral programs. So we have you know, about 60 different programs that you could choose from. Okay, some of them are in STEM, some are in non-STEM, uh, some are interdisciplinary in nature. So there's lots to choose from. And in particular, and I will spend a little bit more time on this, is that there are a lot of funding opportunities for PhD. So we have uh, more than 20 different types of scholarships uh, that students can go on in order to fund their PhD studies. Um, the um, faculty composition and the student composition in general um, is also quite diverse. Uh, we have world-class infrastructure. I think uh, many of you are quite familiar with this. Um, um, all around NUS, there are, you know, um, you know th there's lots of research funding and there's also very good infrastructure for you to do your research. Okay. Now, I mentioned, right, so there are 60 over PhD programs. Um, it's a big university. So what this really means is that there are really a lot of opportunities for connections across the different schools. Uh, which also, and, and this is something I think, you know, people use it a lot as a buzzword, but I think very much within your PhD, uh, we do encourage you to look beyond just your very narrow department or your very narrow field to really utilize the fact that you are sitting amidst this entire ecosystem to really try to make these connections and maybe also um, dabble in some interdisciplinarity. A very, very good example, I, you know, I was just talking to one of the speakers just now, Dr. Doreen, you know, although she's trained in the Faculty of Science as a chemist, you know, she is now working in applied materials and basically doing what she, you know, some of the kind of, you know, taking elements of what she did during her PhD and applying it to a different material. So I think that's a really classic kind of example where you can have this sort of uh, interconnections, okay? All right, so um, just a little bit more about PhD programs. Um, um, I think it's useful to spend a couple of minutes on this, which is that there are many different pathways to doing a PhD. Okay, so some people will go with this route where, you know, perhaps they're not so certain about the PhD, so they might decide maybe I want to figure out whether this is a good fit for me. So they start with a master degree and then subsequently they decide to embark on the PhD. So that's one possible route. There are others and increasingly so we see where students actually are pretty sure after their undergraduate degree that they want to do a PhD or maybe they want to work for a little bit and then they decide they want to do a PhD and they don't have a master's degree and that's totally okay. So I think what I mean to say is that there are different pathways. You can either go through the master's route or you can go directly from an undergraduate to a PhD. You can break it up with some work experience in between, but each of these different pathways exist and we're not going to kind of say, oh, your application is not so strong because you don't have a master degree, you know, or for that matter, um, um, it, it's really a question about crafting your research statement, the, the, the rationale for why you want to do a PhD versus kind of checking off the various qualifications you need to attain, uh, different scores that you need to attain in order to do a PhD. So um, at least at NUS, we accept students both directly from an undergraduate degree. We also accept students from a master's degree. Some of you might be in master's by coursework or master's by research programs who want to upgrade to a PhD. Those channels also exist. Okay. So if you have further questions on this, you can definitely raise it during the, the panel. Okay, and finally, and I think this is something that are on a lot of people's minds, um, what do we offer in terms of scholarships? So I'm very pleased to tell you that the vast majority, in fact, more than 90% of our students who are doing their PhD at NUS have a scholarship. In general, our strong preference is to admit students with a scholarship. Okay, this is very much unlike master's programs, grad cert programs, where in general, we don't have that many scholarships available. PhD is different. We 
actually want to admit students on scholarships. So there are many different types of scholarships. There is a very traditional NUS research scholarship, but there are also scholarships that are funded by grants. There are also scholarships that are maybe together with government agencies like ASTAR, DSO, so and so forth. Um, but basically, from the student's perspective, you don't really have to worry. Typically, when you apply for a PhD program in any of the departments and schools at NUS, you will be automatically considered for a scholarship. Okay. Now, there are different tiers of scholarships. So what I have listed on this uh, slide here are really the basic scholarship provisions. So we expect to fully pay for your tuition fees. Um, so those are covered for up to four years. Um, there will be a monthly allowance, which um, should be sufficient for you to you know, um, get, get your own housing, also to live off. And in general, uh, the other thing, very, very crucial, there is no bond, okay? It's not like we give you a scholarship and we expect you to stick around for another five or six years. No, no, no. After you graduate, please go and find a nice job. Okay, that's really the uh, intention. Uh, but do come back and visit us. I mean, the whole idea is that, you know, you should come back and visit us, work with your professors. Uh, that, that in, in, in a sense, is the bond is the connection, not, not the bond as in, you know, service bond. Okay, so I think with that, um, I'm, I, I'll conclude. If you want more information on different scholarship opportunities, you can scan the QR code right there and uh, there's a lot of information on the CDE webpage as well as the NUSGS webpage on scholarship opportunities and our PhD programs.